As the skies collapse over China, a storm of epic proportions devastates the country. The monumental Three Gorges Dam, once considered a masterpiece of human engineering, collapsed in the face of a greater force. Nanang, once a vibrant city full of life, is now submerged by a flood that dates back to ancient biblical prophecies of Noah's flood. However, the destruction goes beyond a natural disaster. Many see this event as a divine warning, a foreshadowing of the apocalypse. That the signs are clear and the message is undeniable, Jesus' return is near. As we witness the dam collapse and subsequent chaos, we are forced to question the very foundations of our world and our faith. But are we really prepared for the impending storm? Let's delve deeper into the prophetic meaning of this cataclysm and the evidence that points to the Lord's imminent return. China is currently facing an unprecedented crisis, with a series of natural disasters devastating the country. From torrential floods that inundate entire cities to devastating earthquakes that shake communities, Millions of people struggle with chaos and uncertainty. For many, these events go beyond weather or the forces of nature. They resonate like divine messages, inviting us to deep spiritual reflection. In this scenario, many Christians believe that turning to God in prayer is not only necessary, but imperative. Prayer becomes a safe haven where we seek divine intervention and find solace in the midst of the storm. It is a powerful tool to intercede for those who suffer, to lift up those in their darkest moments, and to plead with God for strength and resilience as the nation faces these tumultuous waters. The Bible exhorts us to pray without ceasing, especially when darkness seems to hang over our lives. As China struggles with the weight of these disasters, Christians around the world are called to join their voices in prayer. Each supplication echoes across the heavens, creating a network of hope that unites believers from different continents. However, we must recognize that prayer is only the first step in our response. The Christian faith teaches that belief and action must go together. As stated in the book of James, faith without works is dead. This reminder awakens in us a sense of urgency, calling us to transform our prayers into concrete acts of love and compassion. Now, more than ever, Christians are called to reach out, demonstrating the compassionate spirit of Christ in every gesture. We cannot waste the opportunity to show love in practical ways, donating to relief efforts, organizing local campaigns, or even offering time to volunteer are ways to show compassion. Every act, no matter how small, carries the potential to bring hope and healing. A while disasters cause pain, they also provide a unique opportunity for Christians to share their faith and bring hope to those in need. After tragedies like these, people often look for answers that transcend the everyday. This is a crucial time for Christians to share God's message of love and salvation with those who may show may chant deeper meaning. Connecting with those who suffer requires genuine compassion, whether through heartfelt conversations, distributing uplifting materials, or organizing community outreach. The goal is to provide a light of hope, not exploit another's pain. Sharing the gospel should not be seen as a task to be crossed off a list. It must flow from a genuine desire to help and uplift others. As we reach out to those who have been impacted, it is essential to respect their different beliefs and cultures, approaching each interaction with humility and understanding. By showing the love of Christ through our actions, we create bonds that can inspire spiritual growth in the future. In the wake of the recent disasters in China, Christians around the world have a significant responsibility to respond with prayer and practical action. Oh, as we pray fervently for divine guidance, we should also reach out to offer help to those in greatest need. Now, this balanced approach not only alleviates immediate suffering, but also reflects the core values of the Christian faith, love, compassion, and selfless service. The joint response to these tragedies demonstrates the unity and strength of the Christian community. It is an opportunity to live the teachings of Jesus which encourages us to love our neighbors and support the most vulnerable. By coming together in prayer, service, and faith, we can illuminate the darkness and offer a glimpse of God's kingdom here on earth. Now let's turn our attention to the disaster. The city of Nanyang in Henan province recently faced a catastrophic flood. Torrential rains caused water levels to rise rapidly, plunging the city into chaos. With more than 300 mm of precipitation in a short period, local authorities were forced to issue a red storm warning the most serious possible. As the city faced the devastating consequences, some inhabitants began to see the flood as a sign of divine retribution or even as a harbinger of the second coming of Christ. The combination of fear, reflection, and spiritual awakening became a palpable presence on the city's streets, 
The book of Amos offers us an example of how God uses natural events and crises to call his people back to repentance. In ancient times, the prophet Amos warned the Israelites that the disasters they faced were consequences of their separation from God and their social injustice. The Bible narrates that God permitted such calamities not as arbitrary punishment, but as a means of bringing his people back to righteousness and obedience. This pattern of divine intervention can be found throughout Scripture being a way in which God expresses His justice and His desire for redemption. As in the past, many Christians believe that contemporary disasters, such as the floods in Nanyang, are warning signs, inviting humanity to reconsider its ways. Each tragedy becomes an opportunity to evaluate our relationship with God and spiritual values. The immediate consequences of the floods were devastating. Homes were leveled, businesses destroyed, and essential infrastructure seriously damaged. Thousands of people have been displaced and emergency services have been overwhelmed, struggling to rescue those trapped and provide essential resources. The severity of the disaster exceeded local capacities, requiring assistance from provincial and national authorities. The scene of submerged streets, floating debris, and downed trees painted a grim picture of the city's situation. Amidst so much devastation, Questions arose about the reason for such calamities. Some pointed to climate change as one of the causes, while others looked to spiritual explanations. In Christianity, many believe that natural disasters can be signs of divine dissatisfaction or warnings. Historically, disasters such as floods, plagues, and earthquakes were often interpreted as divine punishment or calls to repentance. Thus, some have interpreted the Nenyang floods as a reflection of God's wrath, believing that such events carry with them a spiritual message. The concept of a flood as divine retribution is deeply rooted in Christianity, echoing the story of Noah and the ark. The Bible narrates that God sent a great flood to cleanse the earth of its sins, sparing only Noah and his family. For many, the flood in Nenyang is seen as a modern version of this event, a call for moral and spiritual reflection. As we delve deeper into apocalyptic visions, belief in the second coming of Christ is fundamental to Christian eschatology. This event is described as the moment when Jesus will return to earth bringing the final judgment and the establishment of the kingdom of God. Natural disasters, conflicts, and suffering are often cited as signs that precede this event. Therefore, for some, the floods in Nenya are yet another indication that the end times are approaching. This perspective leads many believers to an increase in religious fervor and introspection. Some believe this catastrophe is an opportunity for spiritual revival a chance to renew faith and share the gospel with those who are searching for answers. Churches and Christian groups play a vital role in offering spiritual support, guiding those in crisis, and helping to strengthen faith. The flood in Nenyang serves as a reminder of how fragile life can be, showing the connection between the natural world and spiritual matters. Regardless of how these events are interpreted, whether as environmental signs, divine wrath, or portents of the end, they carry profound meanings for affected communities. The response to disast. Responses of this magnitude must be comprehensive, including not only meeting immediate needs but also long-term support and spiritual comfort. As the waters recede and the city begins to rebuild, the lessons learned and bonds forged during the crisis will shape Nanyang's future. This tragedy reminds us of the unwavering strength of faith, kindness, and unity in times of adversity. However, the role of Christians is not limited to practical support. In times of crisis, many seek spiritual explanations for suffering. Among Christians, there is a view that these calamities are expressions of God's wrath against both sin and sinners. This belief, grounded in Scripture, suggests that God's wrath is an intentional call for humanity to turn to Him. The Bible teaches us that God's wrath is not arbitrary, but rather a response to ungodliness and injustice. Psalm 71 states, God is a righteous judge, a God who manifests His wrath every day. Passages like this highlight that God's displeasure is directed at human transgressions. In modern culture, there is a tendency to separate the sin from the sinner, but the Bible often presents them as interconnected. Romans 1.18 speaks of God's wrath being revealed against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. The passage indicates that both sin and sinners are subject to divine judgment. This perspective challenges the modern view of a lenient God presenting a deity deeply committed to moral justice. The disasters that plague China from floods that displace millions to earthquakes that level cities are interpreted by some believers as divine interventions designed to provoke repentance. Such catastrophes are seen not as random events, but as spiritual invitations for humanity to return to God. So the scriptures, particularly the book of Amos, show how God uses events like these to guide His people. The consequences of these calamities are, without a doubt, devastating. However, for many Christians, they offer an opportunity for spiritual rebirth. Just as in the past, 
When the people of Israel were called to reflect on their paths, today's Christian communities are invited to respond to these signs with renewal of faith and commitment to the teachings of Christ. The Nanian floods, like other recent disasters, are powerful reminders of human frailty in the face of nature and divine will. For those who believe in the prophetic messages of these events, these tragedies are seen as signs of the proximity of great spiritual transformations. The return of Jesus, as described in Revelation, is one of the pillars of this belief, and many see these disasters as a prelude to the final judgment. The idea that natural disasters are signs of the end times is not new. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus warned his disciples about the signs that would precede the end. Among these signs, he mentioned earthquakes, famines, and pestilences as indicators of future events. These signs, according to many, are becoming increasingly frequent and intense, generating a growing expectation for the return of Christ. However, this expectation should not be guided solely by fear. Christians are called to act with faith and compassion in these difficult times, helping those in need, showing love, and using these crises as opportunities to strengthen faith are fundamental responsibilities. Just as Jesus demonstrated compassion for the sick and afflicted, Christians today are called to follow his example. As Nanyang and other areas of China recover from recent disasters, the Christian response must be marked by solidarity and concrete action. Helping with reconstruction, providing shelter, food and spiritual support are ways to demonstrate faith in action. And every act of charity is an opportunity to reflect the light of Christ. Prayer remains one of Christians' most powerful tools to intercede for affected nations. The unified, fervent prayer of the global Christian community can have a profound impact, not only restoring devastated regions but also strengthening the faith of those who pray. The book of James reminds us that the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Praying for the victims of disasters is planting seeds of hope and healing. However, prayer should not be the only step. Just as faith without works is dead, prayer without action loses its effectiveness. The combination of prayer and action is what defines true Christianity in times of crisis. By responding with generosity and empathy, Christians can transform lives, bringing relief both physically and spiritually. Natural disasters often awaken a spiritual openness in people who seek answers to suffering. For many facing the loss of loved ones in their homes, these tragedies become moments of reflection on life and divine purpose. This is a crucial time for Christians to enter into dialogue, offering hope and comfort through the gospel. Helping people find meaning in the midst of pain is one of the greatest demonstrations of love Christians can offer. The gospel brings a message of hope, salvation and reconciliation with God. In times of crisis, this message has the power to deeply touch hearts, offering peace and comfort that the material world cannot provide. 